Remember that promise that Ayana Koji made? Oreto Futari Kiride. Korekara Ichinenkan or Mayoazu Tskisunde. Oreto Au Yakso Kuste Kreruka, Ima, Stayoto Motte Kotobao. Sono Tokini Styro Koto Yakso Kuru. Tashimo Yakso Kuruya. Mirai or Kakte Shinai. Daga. もしも一ノ瀬が没落してしまうようならその時は俺が解釈するややめてください<笑> His promise to i c h i n o s e Their promise to each other Ayana Koji will crush i c h i n o s e This is what you're gonna do, right? i c h i n o s e We didn't mean it like that. I don't know what I'm saying. What did he say? <laughs> T Rex going wild. Nah, bro. Yo, what's up, Tiofum Nation? It's me, the Tiofum Mother here again. We are going, uh, or I am actually going to dive right into the summary of Volume 12.5 of Year 2 of Classroom with the Elite. Yozitsu, Yozitsu. Yokoso Jitsuriko Shijoshugu no Kyoshitsu. The final volume of Year 2, the second year arc. Ninen Sen Hen, right? That's how you pronounce it in Japanese. It's a lot to take in, so I'm just gonna jump right into this. But first things first, I'm just gonna do a, uh, I'm just gonna do a um, quick um, fun fact about Kinugasa Sensei and Tomosi Sensei. Kinugasa Sensei is the author of Clash with the Elite. Shogo Kinugasa Sensei is the author of Clash with the Elite. Tomose Sensei is the illustrator of Clash with the Elite. So let's do a quick background of them. I don't know if you guys will believe this, but uh, I'm pretty sure most of the fans, if not actually, but yeah, um, if in general, I'm pretty sure um, some of you don't know this, but both of them, Tomosu Sensei and Kinogasa Sensei, worked on visual novels. <laughs> yeah, boy. And the character designs and some characters are similar to Clash of the Elite's character designs and character personality so their visual novel is titled reminiscence and reminiscence recollect it's it's a uh, pretty famous i mean look at the <laughs> the characters they're kind of similar right you got susan right there and we have k from <laughs> this is reminiscence recollect this time the the sequel so we have k karizawa's similar design we got Iris Sakura, we got Fuka Senpai. I don't know if you guys know this, but this is another one. Akatsuki no Goe. Akagoe Guard of Daybreak. So as you can see, yeah, um, there's an English, right? Yeah. So it's the same, by the way. Look at this. Kinugasa Shogo. <laughs> and Tomose Shunsaku. So yeah, they were originally staffs and they uh previously worked on visual novels so you can really see the similarities there you guys can try it i mean i haven't played it but yeah anyway you can kind of see there the similarities in character design enough about that let's jump right into this ridiculous wild crazy ass volume all right so thank you to let me give you a shout out real quick thank you to at jimmy 69 all right thank you for giving me the summaries that i missed out so yeah it's crazy because i expected the k and the anakoji breakup but i did not expect a lot of these things so yeah let's jump right into the summary that was presented to me so yeah this is just translated from japanese to english all right a quick summary of volume 12.5 of yoshitsu hoshinomiya Tomoe's grudge. Alright, Hoshinomiya sensei. Ayana Koji had told the other three teachers that Hoshinomiya had negotiated with Ayana Koji before the last exam that he could use his body. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. 
By telling him this, Chabashra learns that Hoshnaomiya still holds a grudge against her for the past unanimous test. However, Ayana Koji says that he wants to leave Hoshinomiya sensei to him. At this point, the other three teachers decide not to decide Hoshinomiya's treatment here and there and wait and see for a while. Alright, so yeah, I got a lot here, but but before we jump right into um the summary that's been uploaded, it's just directly translated from Japanese to English. So yeah, bear with the uh, translation there. I'm just gonna read the comments that Jimmy69 provided, alright? So, here we go. Without further ado, are you guys in? I'm ready, bro. Yeah, because I've read it. Lamau. First, we'll go to this one. Um, Anna Koji and Koji. In the mirror, there's always the same me reflected as usual. This is Anna Koji and Koji's dialogue conversation. Sorry, but I don't really know. A mirror is just a mirror. It only shows what's right in front. It seems like you and I see different things. Or perhaps you're just lying about not seeing it at all. <laughs> From the start, you don't care about others, Koenji. Whoever whoever it is, whatever happens, you don't seem to care. <laughs> We're actually getting a rival here. So I'm going to read Atsuomi, which is Ayana Koji's father, Kiyotaka's father. And Koenji's dad, Koenji's father. I'm gonna read that. Alright, here we go. Ayana Koji's dad, Prime Minister Kijima, and Koenji's dad. During the three way parent teacher meeting, Atsuomi, Kiyotaka's father, Ayana Koji's father, attended as a, seem as a seemingly ordinary parent, playing the role of a good father. However, he deliberately extended his time there to ensure a calculated encounter, or rather, a near miss with Koenji's dad, who was scheduled to meet next. In the meeting, Atsuomi informs Kyotaka that he will refrain from interfering with him for the rest of the year. Indeed. So, Anakoji is free for the rest of the third year. Whatever he does, he's just going to do it. Following this, Atsuomi attempts to engage with Koenji's father but is quickly brushed off. Frustrated, he storms into, chair into the chairman's office only to find both Prime Minister Kijima and Koenji's father already there. Prime Minister Kijima, having reviewed Kyoto's exam results, expresses his admiration for the boy's abilities. In their conversation, Atsuomi brings up the idea of Kyotaka transferring classes. If that were to happen, he would inevitably face off against Koenji. Oh ho ho ho. We're getting we're actually getting the fight that we've all been waiting for. Let's see. I hope it's worth it. I hope it's worth the wait, man. Let's go third year. Hopefully it's peak. Peak peakest of the peak of coat <laughs> please i beg of you <laughs> year two has its ups and downs bro proposal is then made should kyotaka win in such confrontation prime minister kijima promises to grant ayana koji's father some of his valuable time meanwhile koji's father also shares his stance he would instruct his son that if he truly desires absolute freedom he must graduate as a member of class a within his current class that's actually really good because you know what that means Koenji will not be holding back anymore because remember in in year two okay in year two Suzune approached Koenji and made a deal that if Koenji wins first place they'll let him go whatever he does he, he's just he, he's just free to do it like he's not gonna be involved in any of this situations between classes so He's just, he just has the freedom. But this time, after everything, if he graduates into Class A because of Koenji's father, if they graduate in Class A, their class, he would have the absolute freedom that he has always wanted. So, that means Koenji will then be doing his absolute best to reach Class A. And that right there is peak. They're they're already in class A. However, they have to keep their status in class A. Cause Ayana Koji is about to face Koenji. Now let's talk about Ryuen and Susan's encounter with Atsuomi, Ayana Koji's father. And I'm glad this was released. This was before I created the video guys, alright? So bear with me. But anyway, 
here you can read it you can pause the video and see for yourself because I enjoyed these conversations Ryu wins um, uh, conversation or dialogues and the way he speaks to the father of Ayana Koji it's a bit rude but it's funny I, and I actually laughed when I was reading it and boy this was really really good I like this conversation between them it showed a hint apparently because because Atsuomi Ayana Koji's father hinted something and uh, yeah but before that yeah um, he asked the both of them if they are uh, friends or classmates of Kyotoka Ayana Koji um, Susane said that uh, she is but Ryuin was like huh, my enemy <laughs> And boy Atsuomi, Ayana Koji's father, his uh he seemed really impressed. Atsuomi's fa Atsuomi, Ayana Koji's father seemed really impressed that there is an enemy <laughs> of uh Kyoto Ayana Koji. So um yeah. And I'm really glad that this happened because of their curiosity. I love that both Ryuin and Suzune were both curious about Ayana Koji's father what the man looks like, what kind of man Ayana Koji's father is, what kind of man was the man that raised Ayana Koji like that. And so that is one of the best scenes in this entire volume. So I'm glad this happened. Everything so far, everything that's been leaked were really, really good. And there's a tease about the Negishi something. So, um, yeah, N. N no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I actually liked this dialogue, this uh, whole scene of Ryu and, and Susan talking to Ayana Koji's dad. So yeah, anyway, that is that. And Ayana Koji transferred to Sakayanagi. Unfortunately, Sakayanagi withdrew, and that means she has been expelled. I saw that coming. I knew that was coming because it was a promise made by Ayana Koji and Sakayanagi that um, Sakayanagi will lose. And Ryuen versus Sakayanagi, it, when Sake, Sakayanagi did promise to Ryuen that if she lost, she will withdrew willingly. Uh, same goes to Ryuen. And so the aftermath of that. Sakayanagi was supposed to win, but Ayana Koji interfered and they made the deal. So Sakayanagi lost. Sakayanagi's voluntary withdrawal has been finalized and he, she leaves the school. Her transfer destination is the school where Masumi Kamuro ooh, is attending. So they're going to reunite. In her last conversation with Ryu, and Sakayanagi confesses what Ayana Koji said to her. Although Ryuin does not agree, he says that Sakainagi's decision to withdraw is a sign of weakness. Ryuin ends by saying, we'll meet again sometime, but he finds it strange as he believes they will never meet again. In his conversation with Ayana Koji, in her conversation with Ayana Koji, it is revealed that Sakainagi's strength was too great. As a result, other leaders still have potential for growth, but Sakainagi doesn't. This is why Ayana Koji decided on Sakenagi's withdrawal. Sakenagi then makes two requests. The first is, my role isn't over, right? Which implies that even after leaving the school, they might meet again, hinting at future developments, possibly during the university arc. I don't know if that'll happen, but if it does happen, oh my lord. <laughs> They're gonna drag out Kote, huh? But no longer Clash from Daily, but yeah. The second request is for Ayana Koji to handle what should be done with the class after his departure, after her departure, specifically with regards to Hashimoto. Yeah, Hashimoto is now like rebelling or he rebelled against Sakenagi. So yeah, the two share an embrace before parting ways. The two friends who came to see her off were Yamamura and Morishita. These two were different from the others as they had special feelings for Sakenagi. By the way, Sakenagi's home was just 15 minutes away by car from the school. Afterwards, Ayana Koji shares the message, uh, shares the message Sakenagi entrusted to him. He explains the pr she explains the process for the class to move up to Class A, 
but the details are unknown. This is how Sakanagi completely leaves the school. No! It's sad because I loved Sakayanagi. She isn't really an enemy. No one really is an enemy except Tsukishiro. But yeah. And Nagumo. But yeah. Um, and others from White Room. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, yeah, it's really sad because Sakayanagi is one of the greatest characters in Clash of the Elite. Sakanagi has always been there since day one that um, I thought would be the one lasting even up to the end. But Kinugasa Sensei was really certain about um, expelling a major character, and that is Sakanagi. So it's sad because I really love Sakanagi. I'm sad to see her go, but it's for the best because. I think for me, this is a great choice. When I predicted this on uh, before Volume Twelve came out, I was like, "I'm pretty certain Ryuin will win. I'm pretty certain Sake and Nagi will lose." I was half wrong. I was half right, and I was right that Ryuin will remain, but Sake and Nagi will not. I was right about that because Sake and Nagi has no need for improvement. She has done her job. She's She's one of the best characters in Classroom The Elite. So there's no more for her development. She's done. There's no more. So her story has ended with Classroom for uh for Classroom The Elite. So yeah, I'm glad that uh they made this choice because Ryuin has a lot more to grow. Um we all know that Ryuin hasn't really fully matured yet, so I'm gonna pause the recording, but yeah, uh, this is another one. So there is more. Um, the promise made uh, by Ayana Koji and Ichinose. We're gonna jump right into that, but for now, let's. Because that's spicy? Naruhodo. Let's go to the cute ones first. Let me thank at tips or TPS or at man underscore 996 or at man underscore 996. When I fall for a girl, I go. I go all in, no holding back, straight to the point. That's Ishizaki. No, um, Ayana Koji kun already has a wonderful girlfriend, so. <laughs> and then Ishizaki did said, did say. So what happens if he breaks up with Kurizawa? Okay, what'll you, what'll you do then, Shina Hiori? Eh? <laughs> Isn't that what you're saying? You're not making any moves because he's already taken, right? It's really cute, bro. Because look at she, look at Sheena Hiori there. Like she's so cute, my man. If you, because I know, I know that he is not using Hiori. But if somehow, somehow in the future you used Hiori, just for your own benefit, and you used her innocence, boy, you are so fucked up. I hate you, Yarakoji. <laughs> He has to go, blood. He has to go, blood. Hiyori is my best wife, okay? <laughs> Not wife, wife. <laughs> no. Um, delusion. Listen, Hiyori is such a wonderful girl. Even Kinugasa Sensei is struggling to write her as a character. That just shows Hiyori is such a very beautiful, <laughs> complicated character. So, yeah, I love Hiyori. So, if somehow that happened, fuck you, Ayano Koji. <laughs> This is another one. Um, Ryuin and Sake and Nagi. The conversation. But yeah, the page cut off. If not for that, I, we wouldn't be standing here now. It's no exaggeration to say that everything up to this point has been guided by Ayano Koji. Allow me to give you my greatest piece of advice on your own. You will never defeat him. Uh huh. That's something. Anyway, allow me to introduce. Allow me to um, go on to the spice. Um, there's another um, thing here about Hoshinomi Sensei and um, Shabashiro Sensei. But yeah, we're gonna jump right into that later on. But we're gonna go to. Um, let me see here. So this is the direct translation from Japanese to English by Google. So, yeah, this is the uh, withdrawal of Sakanagi. Alright, Kurizawa. 
All the things were over. He went on a movie date with Kurosawa. K. Ibuki was also there to watch the same movie and showed a displeased look. <laughs> Are we getting deja vu? <laughs> After the movie ended, Kurosawa also realized. Then they went to karaoke. There was an atmosphere before people break up and they both knew it. Damn. Yeah. K. already knew it. She felt it. Even way back. So... It's really sad because Anakoji just basically used her for learning about love. And I feel like he didn't really learn much. Because love isn't just about learning. It's about how you really feel. And I feel like Suzune is that person for him. But seeing how the novel, this series is going, I feel like he's going to use Suzune as well. So I don't like that. If he doesn't use Susan in the same way or same treatment, then please, I beg of you, Anakoji, just find someone that you truly love. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like it, like, at all. To be honest, I wasn't sure if this expression was Anakoji's feelings or not. He said, let's break up. In the middle of saying that, he liked her as if it was his true feelings. In the end, he called Kurizawa instead of K. Damn! Emotional damage! Damn! That's big. That's big. That's so bad. Oh, that's so sad. Surname instead of K. Instead of the first name. Damn! And Karuizawa called Ayana Koji-kun instead of Kiyotaka. The two went back to being friends. Wow! That's sad, bro. I feel so bad for Kay. Kay didn't really deserve this at all. She didn't deserve this. But, damn. Kurizawa was crying and it was a really tough scene. It was, really. But it wasn't as heavy as I thought it would be. Damn, that's just that just goes to show you how heartless Anakoji is, huh? To be honest, I thought it would be a tougher breakup. But Kurizawa accepted it for the time being. However, after that, Kurizawa stayed at home all the time. So that's the Kay breakup. And how do I feel? I feel liberated for K, but I feel also terrible for K because she gave her all to just to love Ayana Koji, but Ayana Koji is just using her. And but I, you know what? This is a great move for the author Kinigasa Sensei. You know why? You know why? Why I feel that way? Because. In the interview, Kinugasa Sensei did mention that K's development is done for year two. There's more room for improvement for K in year three. So this is one of the improvements or developments for K afterwards. So more about K's breakup with Ayan Koji. She is so mature about this breakup and I love her for it. When the clock struck midnight, as Cinderella's magic would inevitably wear off, the moment when my relationship with Kiyotaka ended was already decided from the start. It was simply the time for it to happen. Honestly, I wanted to cry, scream, cling to him, and say I would do anything. I wanted to plead that I would do anything for him. Maybe a little while ago. I would have done that, but I won't. I can't. I love K for this. K, you deserve so much better and thank you for not clinging on to him and plead like god damn don't ever do that because my mom actually did that to my father so uh yeah it was one of her worst decisions so um yeah <laughs> i'm glad k did not do that because that would make things hysterical and just more desperate for her and k was so mature for this and I'm glad that she didn't do any of these. She just accepted her reality this time. And this is it. This is their end. I feel like he's going to develop K in in the uh, the next year arc. The third year arc. So I, I love that. So I hope that it's the case. Because if she's going to be a bland side character from now on. It's a wasted character growth for for him to do that because from volume 4 onwards to from the first year arc, it's been great. Then Kurizawa K went bland in year 2. She's just there to show love for Ayana Koji. But other than that, she has no role to play. 
being completely honest here. I'm being transparent here, guys. All right. Uh, more context in this one. Ishizaki's invitation. Ishiz Ishizaki tries to get Ayaka Koji into his class and calls Hiyori to the place. <laughs> Ishizaki says selfish things like if Hiyori comes to our class, she can date him. <laughs> Hiyori is shy, but she welcomes Ayaka Koji's arrival. However, there is no development of Hiyori that would be on the cover. They they only have a short conversation. Ayano Koji properly declines Ishizaki and Hiyori's invitation. It's cute, but yeah, uh, Ayano Koji doesn't feel the same way about Hiyori. So don't use my girl. <laughs> All right, let's go from here. Horikita's love blossoms. Horikita and Ayano Koji are drinking coffee together. Horikita hears that she broke up with Kurizawa and hears that story too. There, Ayano Koji says, "Would you like to put yourself forward as a potential?" girlfriend not boyfriend Horikita brushes him off however after she is alone she feels her heart pounding this was a depiction of how she had already fallen in love with Ayano Koji it's now confirmed that Suzune is in love with Ayano Koji it's a fucking it's a huge development for her as well because you know why Suzune doesn't really prioritize love romance because she is prioritizing to graduate to class A and be the leader that she aspires herself to be. Seeing that she's now in love coincidentally and unconditionally, it's not anything that's deceptive and it's just pure, then yeah, it's really new to her character it's a growth to her character and like i said i did not like susan in year one but i like k in year two i liked susan a lot more k is just a bit bland now year three we'll see if i love susan a lot 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 more all right it goes to show you that i am not one of those toxic fans of the series that is fighting it out waifu war Susan versus k what the fuck bro get the fuck out of here <laughs> i don't like those wars bro it's like the akana and khan of uh war in oshinoko well that's over now right because <laughs> the series is over anyway there it is it's a huge development for Suzune. Because it shows that she's now in love. Um, this is them two again. His face drew closer and I suddenly felt embarrassed and I and a bit flustered. I quickly pulled back to put some distance between us. Well, fine. Then tell me next time. Next time. Sure. As if dodging his smug face, I shifted my eyes toward the window, letting my eyes wander. Many things about him get on my nerves, but Ayana Kojikun's presence is undeniably reassuring. I can't deny it. He has become a pillar of support for me. And I like them. I like them. Look at that. It really looked like that they are absolutely in love. And yeah, Ayana Koji's been there this whole time. Ever since year one, he's always been there for Suzune. And I'm not denying that, obviously, because they've been there. But this happened it's heartbreaking to see because it just shows it's a symbolism that he's never going back to their class he's gone by her side did he step out to use the restroom normally that would be the only thought crossing my mind and yet for some strange reason i felt something a faint feeling of loneliness maybe even a slight ache in my chest even when the victory celebration came to an end he never returned to the classroom Bye bye, Ayano Koji. Bro is done. He's never going back to Susan's class. He's now in Sake and Nagi's class, in which it was formerly led by Sake and Nagi. Let's jump right in to the spice. After the breakup, this is it. And then we'll jump right in to the end of this uh this volume, alright? We got a lot of spicy things here. We got Susan's love blossomed, finally. And K and Ayana Koji's breakup, they're back to being just strangers, not friends. Strangers. Strangers. <laughs> and the farewell of Sake and Nagi. Um, the, the dad talk. 
dad's talk and the face off of Ayana Koji and Koenji. Finally, we're gonna have it. And then your cuteness. And then Ichinose. Here we go. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh my lord, save me. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna read this one. Um from Jimmy again. A year, a night with Ichinose. A year after their promise, Ichinose had been in shock and hadn't left her room for quite some time. Ayana Koji waited in his own room, expecting Ichinose to come to him, but she never showed up. Curious about how things would end, Ayana Koji went to Ichinose's room. After exchanging a few texts, she finally let him in. But this too was something Ichinose had anticipated because of their promise. Remember that? You guys remember that? Crushing her? She knew he'd come. She had prepared herself, tidied up, and left the door unlocked, ready for this moment. Inside, Ayana Koji spoke about everything that had happened and presented two options for ho for how her own class, for how her class could move forward. Ayana Koji would join Ichinose's class, but she would have to drop out. She could rise above her pain, use her anger as fuel, and step up as a true leader. However, Ayana Koji secretly hoped for a third answer. Ichinose responded, rejecting both options. If I join, our class can't aim for class A. But if you're with us, we can make it. And I'm not dropping out either. She said firmly. Then Ichinose revealed the 1% chance that Ayana Koji had secretly been hoping for. It was to overcome her greatest weakness, her fragile mental fortitude. To do so, she made she she made a bold move. Ichinose pushed forward, closing the gap between them. At this moment, Ayana Koji mentioned that he had broken up with Kurizawa. Get ready for it, boys! Seizing this moment, seizing the moment, Ichinose pushed Ayana Koji onto the bed, kissed him, and began undressing him. That night, they spent the night together. Six. Six! <laughs> So, more context about Ichinose and Ayana Koji's night. Look at here. Uh, here, as you can see. After that, Ichinose took a bold step, right? And then, taking advantage of this moment, or seizing the moment, Ichinose pushed Ayana Koji onto the bed, kissed him, and began to undress him. Ichinose guided Ayana Koji's hand between her cleavage. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That's hot. And it felt softer than Kay's thighs. <laughs> Seeing Ichinose's gaze radiate darkness that hoped for moonlight along with blood red like a wilted rose at that push, all I saw were tears like flowing water. The blow I gave... <laughs> the blow. The killing blow. <laughs> I gave may have been like a sword piercing a wounded heart, but that gaze made me try to push further, as if throwing away my burden, releasing everything inside her warm part. The woman's breath felt heavy and pressed her lips. Am I falling in love? No, this is just a compliment to the previous textbook. That's fucked up. The next day, Ichinose reappeared before her classmates, brighter and more confident than ever. Her sudden shift left classmates left her classmates like Kanzaki confused, but she openly admitted her feelings for Ayana Koji. She, she also asked her class to wait, for pro, uh, promising to pull everything together before the new term began. What exactly, what exactly her method would be remained unclear. However, it seemed the plan was to keep Ichinose as the leader while leveraging Ayana Koji's abilities. In her own words, if Ayana Koji can use me, then I'll use him too. There was an undeniable hint of darkness to her proposal, a pact forged with mutual understanding. And so it seemed Ichinose and Ayana Koji became lovers. I don't like where this is going. This is the most toxic relationship that I've ever seen in Clash of the Elite. I'm not lying. This is the most toxic relationship that I've ever seen so far. It's not Kay and Ayana Koji. Kay and Ayana Koji were okay. They were they were okay as a couple. Or if not good, they're okay. Alright? Kay tried her best. Ayana Koji just didn't really reciprocate. This time, 
Nah, bro, this is fucking effed up. This is fucked up. This is a mess. This, it's a messed up relationship. It's a wreck. It's toxic. And I don't like it. It's not a normal relationship compared to Kay and Nayana Koji. I'm just saying. I'm being transparent here, guys. That's why I said it. I did not like Ichinose's character this entire year two arc. I did not like her at all. She's, She went from being this really nice, wholesome girl to being this yandere, impure, dark character, toxic character selfish character and plus she's doing it for her own benefit like what the fuck bro can we can we not all right so finally we have the end of this one ayana koji transfers to sake naga's class after advancing to class a horikita horikita class was holding a celebrity a celebratory party during the event horikita encouraged ayana koji to uh, to continue giving his best and working hard. However, her words didn't last long. Before anyone realized, Ayana Koji had quietly disappeared. Ayana Koji stepped into another classroom and, and introduced himself. I'm Ayana Koji Kiyotaka, and I've just transferred to this class using 20 million private points. I can't replace Sakenagi, who voluntarily withdrew. But if everyone here still has the will to fight, I'm confident I can help turn this massive setback into an opportunity for recovery. The class Ayana Koji transferred into was none other than Sakayanagi's class. With this, the stage was set for Ayana Koji's initial vision, a four-way battle among equally matched classes for the top spot in class A. It's done. It's over. It's over. We are screwed. We're, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Oh, yeah. Let me read this for, uh, as well. Um, I know Koji had quietly disappeared. The new school term had arrived, marking the start of the third year. In a conversation between Hoshinomiya Sensei and Chibashara Sensei, Hoshinomiya Sensei revealed an unexpected shift in strategy. There's no longer any need to stop your class from reaching class A. The reason? Your class's joker is no longer there. It seemed... This was the result of negotiations Ayana Koji had with Hoshinomi Sensei, a move to resolve a conflict. Just as Chibashira was heading towards her own class, another staff member stopped her and informed her of a major change. One student had transferred out of her class. So that is Ayana Koji. Ayana Koji finally transferred to Saka and Naga's class. And um, he will now change... The method of their class. Sakayanagi is no longer present in their class. However, that doesn't change the fact that he's no longer in Susan's class, class A, but he is now in a different class, and that is Sakayanagi's former class. He's now become the leader of their class. Damn. You know, we have different endings for each year so far. And that's very good. That's very unique. I'd say this is a really, really good volume. All right. I would say it's really good. You know why? Everything is a mess in a good way. Because in the first year, we have this wholesome graduation party, graduation ceremony, everything about that. Uh, Manabu graduating and everyone in the class class A, class B, class C, class D of the third year. And their senpais are now leaving, graduating, and it's wholesome. Their farewells, wholesome. And it's thrilling because we get uh, we got teases for the next year arc, in the second year arc, and it's wholesome at up to the very end because a new uh, Ayana Koji has finally confessed He's the one that reached out to K to learn about love in a way it's wholesome but also twisted because he wants to be human. He wants to learn and wants to feel the emotion of love, the romance that he is missing. He wants to know about love naturally, but he didn't get it. But that ending was wholesome. It was great. And the farewell... Uh, of the siblings and Ayana Koji and Manabu, it was fair. It was a wholesome farewell, but 
this time it's dark and thrilling this time it gave off the impression that this is not a perfect finale but a continuation for the next year it didn't feel like a total ending for the series or for the year because I'm not, because another battle another war is about to be commenced in this uh this chaotic school i love it because it gave off a new feeling for me the first year arc the ending was great it was one of the best endings out there and you can all see that in the anime it was great it wasn't twisted in any way it was thrilling because we get teases but it was wholesome because Ayana Koji is trying and at the same time the farewells are wholesome and the developments Susan's development is wholesome the farewell of the siblings are wholesome and the love that Ayana Koji is gonna tr uh, gonna try to convey he is the one that initiated he's the one that confessed but this time it's not it's dark in a room full of darkness and it's it's so messed up because this time it's dirty love dirty toxic love that it gave off that impression of me it's it's really it's so it gave off you know it really did feel that this is the suspense that we're all we've all been waiting for in this series this is the kind of ending we've all been waiting for it's setting up the climax of the story and i like it because essentially year one is act one year two is act two year three is act three so i love it that is why i love this volume so far like god damn i want to read it all right it, but like i said um let me graduate <laughs> on time please i don't know if it's just me but it really gave off the the impression of me that this series ended in a really good way messed up but in a really good way because i can imagine it visually on how they ended it with ayana koji introducing himself to his new class and it just ended there it's so dark golly bro anyway um, if you're gonna ask me what do I rate this honestly so far I haven't read it but based on the leaks the summaries I'll give it a 10 out of 10 honestly bro like I am heartbroken uh, because of the breakup and everything that's happened Saka and Nagi's farewell it was heartbreaking it was soft but also heartbreaking you know it was a character that we loved, but she withdrew voluntarily. So, yeah. And it had wholesome moments like Suzune finally realizing that she's slowly falling in love with Ayan Koji. For two years of them being together, it finally blossomed. And I like that. It's a slow progression, but I love it. It just comes off naturally, you know? I know Suzune fans will like me saying that okay i wasn't a really big susan fan at first like i said but that slow progression paid off and i like that all right so yeah it was wholesome for that moment but the dark twisted love that it showed that a newborn love is now in this final volume of year two like can you see the difference Year one ended in a wholesome relationship, wholesome love confession. This time it ended with a dirty, toxic love relationship. The, both of them never confessed to each other. Both of them never said, I like you, I love you. Ichinose just latched on him, pushed him, kissed him, and then they had sex. Like, what the fuck? That's fucking messed up. You guys like her? <laughs> nah, bro. You guys are weird. <laughs> you guys like her? I don't. <laughs> it just doesn't went from this to this. <laughs> I'm the one that crushed her. 
Ariana Koji crushed her by her by his T-Rex, bro. He crushed her in bed. <laughs> Hot damn! Like I said, I love this volume. I'm not gonna lie. Peak is here. And the competition, the rivalry between Koji and Ariana Koji, I'm hyped for that because the talk between the dads, peak. That was that was peak. Alright. Anyway, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry for um yapping so much about this volume because I thoroughly enjoyed the leaks. This is so far because out of all the leaks, I only read some of the leaks, but I didn't read all of it because I wanted to read the whole thing when it officially releases uh you know the physical copy English translation. This is the first time that I've read every single leak that's been released so far. Like god damn it, this is a first for me. Anyway, that is it for me. That is it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I was supposed to edit my arcane reaction videos of season two, but you know, popular on high demand. So um, you know what I'm saying. This is on high demand. So you guys get the, uh, you guys get the W. You guys want me to create a video about this? Here you go. Hopefully you all enjoyed me yapping. Hopefully you all enjoyed me fanboying about this series again my love for this series is back i love this series so much that it just fell off hard for me you know the recent volumes but then volume 12 came out god damn that was peak and then volume 12.5 god damn this is so peak <laughs> this is what i've been waiting for this is what i've been longing for this series and thank you kinegasa sensei for creating this story i love it all right um, I don't know what you guys feel, but this is how I feel, all right? I'm just yapping here, li you guys listening to me, of what I feel, so yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed me yapping about this volume of Clash of the Elite. Thank you so much for the support every damn time, guys. You guys are the best supporters out there. I can see your uh, support thoroughly and... I am doing my best for you guys, you know, um, even though I can't do much content lately because of college and plus the thesis, it it let me down because I, I was supposed to not pass, but I eventually passed, which is weird. But anyway, yeah, you guys have been there with me and you guys are the ones that are giving me the revenue for my stability of life. And <laughs> yeah. Even though it's not monthly yet, um, still, I thank you all for the support and for you guys watching my videos and supporting me, commenting. So, um, yeah, I can see your support thoroughly. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is it for me. See you in year three of Clash of the Elite, and I'll see you on year two anime adaptation. Let's see what the studio is. If it's Studio Lurch still, then I'll wholeheartedly accept because their adaptations were okay. It's not the best. It's not the worst. You can see Blue Lock. <laughs>